Hello, in this video you are going to learn, how to set SharePoint permissions for an existing site and list on SharePoint. First, let's understand what is SharePoint permissions. SharePoint permissions control the access that employees, partners, third-party suppliers, and others have to your SharePoint content. You can choose who can read specific information and who cannot. SharePoint permissions control the display of the data in lists, document libraries, and search results. For example, if Sully doesn't have permission to a specific document library, she will not see any documents from that library. The permissions help protect data from people who should not see or distribute it. Okay, now to set up our site permission, we start from the site settings. Select site permission. As we see here any team site has three permission groups. Owners. Members. And visitors. These groups have different permissions on the site. Owner group. The user in this group will have full control permissions. Which means the user can manage site settings, create subsites, and add users to groups. So the owner group has the higher permissions and usually, you find the system admin in the owner group. Members group. The users in this group can manage lists, and view, add, update and remove list items, and documents. Visitor group. The user can just view list items, pages and download documents. As we see here the members group, and the visitor group are empty, so no one has access to the site except the admin. Let's see if Alex can access this site. Alex hasn't the permission for this site so he is going to see this message. Sorry, this site hasn't been shared with you. Now let's share this site with Alex. By adding Alex to the members group. It is very easy to set SharePoint permission, if you use the default settings. But if you want more control, you need to add custom groups and custom permission levels. Here we are, Alex can access the site. Alex can add new items, but he can add new site. Now we're going to log in by the admin account, to view the default permission groups, and the permission level for each group. From site sitting, Site Permission Advanced Permissions In this screen we see here, the default permission groups from SharePoint. Each group has its permissions level. From here we can grant a person permission and add a new SharePoint group. And also we can manage the permission levels. Granting a person permission is one of the ways to assign permission to the user. Click on the grant permission. Then in the invite people. Select the username. And select the permission level. But this way, is not recommended when you have a lot of users, it is so hard to manage the permission later on. Add SharePoint group. We are going to talk about it in detail later on. After we understand the permission levels. Let's click on Permission Levels. First, the full control. This means that the user has full control, like managing site settings, creating subsites, and setting permissions. The system administrator has this level of permissions and other permission levels. The design level, in this level the user, can view, add, update, and delete, approvals, and customizations as well as create and edit new document libraries and lists on the site, but cannot manage settings for the whole site. Edit The user can manage lists and view, add, update, and remove list items and documents. Contribute The user can view, add, update, and remove list items and documents. These rights are the most common rights for regular SharePoint users enabling them to manage documents and information on a site. Finally the read level. The user can only view pages, list items, and download documents. 
we can add our permission levels if we want. Or delete the permission level, by selecting it and clicking delete. Note that we can delete the permission levels that we created only. But not the default permission levels from SharePoint. We can also edit these levels by clicking on the level. From here we can see all the details for this level. The name of the level. The description. And all the different features within SharePoint. We can edit the permission by selecting and unselecting these features. And maybe we want to make a new permission base on this. So we click on a copy permission level. And create a new permission level with some modification. And keep the original level as it is. For example, I want to customize this level by reducing the permissions on it. By preventing the deleting and editing. So simply copy the permission. Type the name of the level. And the description. Unselect the edit. And delete item permissions. Click on create. Here we are. We have a new level. This level will grant the view and add permission only for the user. After we got a good idea about the permission, and the permission levels. Let's see how to customize the permissions that we need on our site. In general, we can assign permissions in different levels. Like permission to access the site collection, and other permission to the site, or subsite. And we can assign permission to list or library, and even specify permissions to each item in the list. We have here an HR department site, this site is one site from site collection for an organization. And we have in this site a leave request list. To learn how we create this list, and how to design a workflow for it, you can find the tutorial videos written down in the description. back to our site. Now we are going to see how to set permission for this site and list and how to control who can manage the site and who can add requests and who can follow up these requests. In the beginning, we have to create the groups on the site collection level. And after that, we can use them anywhere later on site or list. First, let's go back to the main page then. From Site Setting, select Site Information, View All Site Settings, then click on People and Groups. From here, we are going to create the permission groups that we need. And again the SharePoint groups, enable you to manage sets of users instead of individual users. First, let's start with the All Organization Users group. For now, we want to give our users permission to access the site collection, and all the sites that we have. On Groups, click on More. New, then New Group. Type the name, All Organization Users. We can add a description here. Then select the group permission level. And here we are going to select read. Then create. Here we are. We have a new group, which is empty. We are going to add the users in it. From new, add user. You can add the users, one by one. But in our case, we are going to use authenticated users, which represent all AD users account that can log onto your system. Share. Here we are, all our users now can access our sites and lists. Now we are going to create the HR management group. The users in this group could manage the HR site 
by adding subsites, or new lists, updating, and deleting. Again click on create a new group. Type the name, HR management. Add a description. Now, this very important to understand this group is special for the HR site. So now we just create this group here, in site collection level. Without any permission. And later on, we are going to set the permissions for it, inside the HR site. Then create. From new again. Add users. Jim, and Mike. Invite the users who are going to manage the HR site. Share. Next group is HR managers. Again click on create a new group. Type the name. HR managers. Add a description here. The HR managers have to follow up the requests in the leaves requests list and approve or reject these requests, so they need the contribute permission that allows them to edit on the leave requests status. But again as I mentioned before, this group specific for the leave request list. So for now we are going to leave it, without permissions on site collection level. And later, we are going to set contribute permission on the list level. Let's add the users. Invite the users, who are going to follow up the leave request. Simon and Jack. Share. Here we are. We have all the groups that we want. Some of these groups have permission, on the site collection like members and visitors. But the HR special groups didn't. So now are going to the site collection settings, and see the permission that has. Here we are, this all the permission groups that we have. These permissions apply to everything on the SharePoint site, that's mean each site. List, library, and even the documents will inherit the same permissions. But what if I want to set different permission on each site or list? Let's see how we can set it. And let's start with the HR site. Now let's go back to the HR site. To set permissions just to this site. We are going to the site permissions from the site settings. Then at the bottom advanced permission settings. Okay, here are the site group permission, that we have for the HR site. And as you see this website inherits permissions from its parent. We are going to stop inheriting permissions, and customize what the permissions we want for this site. This message is to make sure that you understand what stop permissions mean. Okay. Now here we have already created the groups, that we want. So we are going to keep these groups as it is. Click OK. Now we are going to delete the groups that we don't want. And add the groups that we have created previously. We are going to replace the Spark members with the HR management group. So let's delete the Spark members. This site is for the employees only. And we already have organization users group. So we are going to keep this group and remove the Spark visitor. Now we are going to add the HR management group. Click on grant permissions. 
and here type the group name. And set the permission level for it. Share. And here we are in the HR site. We have now Spark Owner to the admin and HR management group so Jim and Mike, only with the admin can manage this site, and all the organization users can access to this site, and have read-only permission. These permissions will be inherited to everything below this site, every subsite, list, library, or item. In our case, we want to grant the HR managers permissions, to follow up the leave requests. So if we set the HR manager permission on the site level, the HR managers will have permissions on anything on this site, and this is not the scenario we want. We want to grant the HR manager permission only on the leave request list. So let's go and customize the permission for list. Let's go back to our leave request list. From the site setting, click on list settings. Then in the middle of the page, there is permissions for this list. Again we are going to stop inheriting permissions, to customize the permissions for this list. Let's add the HR managers group. Grant permissions. Type the group name. Set contribute permission and share. Here we are. We have Spark Owner for admin and HR management. We need this group for sure in this list. Also, the HR managers and all organization users group. Everything is great for now, but the all organization users group, as you see have only read permission. That means the users can access to this list only. But they can't apply for leave request. We are going to edit this group. Again for this list only. So select the group. Click on edit user permissions. As you see here. This is the permission level that we have created previously in this video. That allows all users to add items in this list only, without editing or deleting. So let's select it, and OK. Cool now this list is ready to manage and use. But you may ask what to do to give these requests more privacy. Which means how to let the user see only his requests, not all the requests. In this case, we have to customize the permission on the item level. Let's see how. Select the item, and from the three dots select share. Up the page the three dots again. From the bottom, click on advance. And here we are the screen for the item permissions. Stop the inheriting permissions. and delete the All Organization Users group. And add the Initiator. Set the permission read only for the Initiator. Technically we can do it manually, as we did it now. But this is not the practical way and is hard to manage, so what to do? The best way to set permissions on item level, is to use set permission by workflow. The permission is set automatically by workflow once the item is created. In this case, you can use Spark Workflow to set the permissions. To learn more about how to set permission by Spark Workflow, see the next tutorial, and also listed down in the description. Now let's test what we did. 
Sarah is a user of this organization. So she can add a leave request. As we see here she can't edit the item nor delete it. She can't add a list or manage it. Okay, let's see Jack. Jack is the HR manager, so he has contributed permissions on the list. As we see here he can update the leave request status. But he can't add lists or manage them. And now Jim. Jim has edit permission on the HR site. So he can create a new list. Or new documents. But if go back to the main side we can see that he doesn't have permission here. If there is a user complains from permission issue. Let's say Alex can't update a leave request. Simply we can check the permissions for Alex at the leave request list. Let's go back to the leave request list. Click on list settings. Then in the middle of the page. Permissions for this list. And at the top, there is a check permissions button. Cool. Enter Alex name. And here we are. This is a list of permission that Alex has. Alex is not in the HR managers group. So HR managers didn't appear here. That's why we can solve this issue by adding Alex to HR managers. Click on HR managers. From new. Add users. Invite Alex. This is a general tutorial, on how to set SharePoint permissions. Follow us to learn more on how to set permissions at the item level. And more complicated permissions. And also how to make a special design for this list. And much more. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe, and if you have a comment please write it down. Thank you.